Hello, everybody, and welcome to Hanson's Ketchup for New Show Plus. My name is Ben Hanson. Thank you for having me back, everybody. New Show Plus is our show each and every week, where if you're a Patreon supporter, patreon.com slash minmax with two ends, you get to vote if you're at the Backstage Pass tier, the $10 tier, on which new show we create or continue every single week. And this week, people voted for a show called Hanson's Ketchup. Uh, if you need to be <laughs> caught up, catched up, uh, I have been out on paternity leave for two months, so there's a lot of stuff I missed out on, a lot of games I did not play, a lot of news I didn't get to weigh in on because I have not been in front of a mic <laughs> uh, for two months. Uh, movies that I haven't discussed that I maybe really enjoyed, uh, and so that is what this is all about. As you can see, uh, we have, of course, the Twitch chat on the screen for this one, since people are going to be lobbing questions and stuff our way. It's a one-man show, so I figure I might as well throw that in there. Uh, thank you um, for supporting MinMax on Patreon and allowing us to, me, to go on paternity leave. Uh, that was really only possible uh, to give me two months with the, with the new baby um, because of your support on Patreon. And we were able to pay for wonderful people to jump in. Uh, shout out to Jenna Stieber, Kyle Bossman, everybody else who stepped up for MinMax, all that fun stuff. If you want to hear me unpack... Um, the paternity to leave, my vantage point on the midnight content produced when I was gone, uh, you know, the story of my kid's birth, what I think about being a father so far, all that fun stuff. Uh, that is what this episode, uh, this week's episode of Party Chat is all about. Party Chat is our Patreon exclusive podcast. If you're a $5 supporter on Patreon, you unlock that bonus podcast each and every week. So if you're wondering, why is he talking about his kid? I do. It's on Party Chat. So unlock that podcast over on Patreon and help support independent games media at the same time. Hey, hey everybody, it's time to get a little caught up on some games. So I chose three games that either I haven't played or barely dabbled in. Uh, and that is what we're going to be uh, playing while I'm fielding questions and talking to the chat and all that fun stuff. Uh, those games are Dave the Diver, awesome, huge hit out of nowhere. I started it and I said, not right now, Dave. I'll get back to you. Um, some game, uh, let's see, historically, from two months ago, you'd say some Dorco Fest called Baldur's Gate 3. Um, but now we have to hail it as the second coming of Christ. So I'll be playing Baldur's Gate 3, because apparently that's been exploding the internet and uh, Sarah Podzorski's brain since I've been gone, so that's great. Uh, and then uh, the third game is another hit out of nowhere. Never could have seen it coming. Uh, Battle Bit Remastered the indie Battlefield clone, all that fun stuff. So we're gonna check out those games uh, while we watch a bunch of uh, ketchup videos. But who needs ketchup videos, everybody, when you got the real deal? Oh yeah, baby. As we like to say on Hanson's Ketchup, episode one, splash that ketchup. Okay, hang on, it's important to, okay. It always runs out just when you don't think it's happening. Okay. It's, my tongue just can't quite reach it. Oh, all right. We got ketchup here, everybody. Okay, and of course, big bucket of fries. People are screaming, where's Leo Vader, the ketchup king? Hey, you can vote for an episode too if you're a Patreon supporter, and then it can be Leo's ketchup for episode two. We can really see how it goes. All right, let's, uh, before we get to the games, which, by God, we're gonna get to. You gotta believe me we're gonna get to those games. Let's get a, just a good... People are saying you don't need the fries? That's interesting. Fries are from a local restaurant. Um, I felt like a weirdo going in there and taking a picture with a bunch of bottles of ketchup and then just asking for a big thing of fries to go. But this is the fun part. All right, let's make sure we just need... Now, some people would say just a dab will do, but they're cowards. Oh, oh yeah. Ooh, God, is that Heinz? God damn. You guys gotta check this out. Teresa Heinz Carey, show her some love. Call back. Y'all remember 2004? Okay, enough of that. Let's get into some frickin' gaming. Uh, uh. Hello, chat. Thank y'all for being here. The Heinz hit's different. Honestly, yeah. God, 
I should open up a restaurant. Does Heinz have an official restaurant? Because I'd like to, I'd like to invest. Um, ketchup flavors around the world, are they different? Is America's more sugary? All that good stuff? Thank you for being here, everybody. Oh, Kyder asked maybe the biggest question, um, other than how's the kid? Which again, we talk about in party chat. Um, asked, did I play Final Fantasy 16? Yes, I did. I finished Final Fantasy 16. I had my kid on my lap, and then I played through all of Final Fantasy 16. Hello, Double Barrel. Um, I enjoyed my time with 16. I was not gaga about it, um, but I enjoyed my time with it. And I think it's like, as a game that released, an RPG that released in 2023, it is fascinating. I think it's, I think it's a more interesting game than it is a good game. Um, and so I know people have been screaming for me to eat more ketchup. And by God, by God, I will. Um, <clears throat> Boo, did you try it? The plot was a little lacking. Yeah, actually, no. It, like, the Eidolon fights, I gotta say, in 5 16, it made my kid crap his pants. He was so impressed. So, I mean, that's gotta speak for something. I sent Square a, a fan letter uh, with a Rorschach test of his poop. Um, but, enjoyed. 16, and I know that people are like, oh, I wish they had more 16 coverage on MinMax's channel. I know it's bizarre timing for that game to come out right when I was going on paternity leave. Um, and so, <clears throat> we're planning on some some bonus content for 16. Oh, Grant in the chat says, best Final Fantasy in a long time since 10. Ooh, this is, if you want to tease of the bonus content, Grant might be warmer than most. All right, so yeah, I'm about half an hour into Dave the Diver. Y'all remember this game? Doesn't it feel like a lifetime ago when this thing was huge? Uh, Forest of Two Hours, Ben, you gotta see the new TMNT movie. I did. Mmm, I did see it. I brought my nephews to it. I was very excited for Mutant Mayhem. Really loved it. Really loved it. Um, I thought the art was awesome. The plot was good. Uh, you know, it's nice not to just, hey, here's a Shredder story. Uh, Jackie Chan's Splinter was unbelievable. It's like, oh, we all love Splinter. We get the idea of Splinter. Um, but I felt like that gave more heart to Splinter than I've ever seen in my life. And his fight scene is so good. Light fight scene spoiler for Mutant Mayhem with Splinter. It's just such a good idea that Splinter goes in to save the turtles. People are saying, I'm going to run out of ketchup. <laughs> you wish. But he goes in to save the turtles. And he uses all of the turtles' weapons at once. It's like that basic dorky idea, but that's so good. Um, then, um, it was just, you know, fun nostalgia blast. And it's really fun because, like, I went with my nephews and uh, we've played a lot of, like, the arcade turtle games. So they, that's mainly their reference point. So, like, they knew, like, oh, Baxter's the fly guy. And it's like, well, in the movie, that's not exactly the case, but sure. And then, like, the fun of being around kids is, like, they were so excited about the movie and all the characters in the movie. And then, without spoiling anything, uh, at a certain point, they're like, who's Shredder? What is Shredder? And I had to, like, pull up pictures of Shredder on my phone and explain why Shredder is so cool. And they were, like, locked in. Like, well, uh, Shredder's the coolest. I can't wait for Shredder. And, like, teaching kids why Shredder rules is is some good dorky stuff. Mm. All right. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. My dog hates me. Ash, are you guys going to do much coverage of Sea of Stars? This is Hanson's ketchup, not Hanson's mustard to the future. Get the hell out of here with that. That's some future tense stuff. Yes, we will. But this is about catching up. This is about catching up. Wait until you learn about Cheddar. That's a great point. That's a great point. Did you all play Dave the Diver? Um, Faded, did you finish Tears of the Kingdom? We'll be getting a bonus episode with the original crew going over the ending. Great question. Um, yes, I finished uh, Tears of the Kingdom. Um, loved it, believe it or not. Um, and so, will we get a bonus episode of The Deepest Dive? No plans for that right now. My plan is... Also, I don't think anybody else finished it yet. 
from that crew um, that I know of. Maybe Kelsey did. I'm not sure. Oh, I'm making it to three games this stream. Absolutely hit my gem. Um, but Tears of the Kingdom, the ending of Tears of the Kingdom is yeah one of my favorite endings ever for any game. I just think that that last fight is so awesome. Um, and like I was a little underwhelmed, I think, but in the build up to it, I'm like, okay, I was expecting something big. And then like the direction they go is like, yes, 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 yes. Um, and so really enjoyed it. It was easier than I thought, for being honest. Um, Cause I remember having a tough time with like the Guardians and Breath of the Wild and like, I don't know, it was maybe 70 hours, 70 or 80 hours in Tears of the Kingdom. I wasn't like getting every shrine and stuff. So I wasn't that strong. I didn't think, but um, oh, I'm munching some fries. Crush up. Welcome, Crush up. Love your channel, Crush up. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I was surprised by kind of how easy the end of Tears of the Kingdom was, but there's some there's some fun surprises in there. I saw some people asking like, hey, you were teasing something in the third episode of The Deepest Dive in Tears of the Kingdom that you didn't want to spoil. And I guess I won't spoil it here, but people, I think, correctly guessed that there's a little bit more of something than you think um, based on the stopping point for the third discussion, you know? And so that was what I was trying to avoid. But I thought that everybody did a great job for that Deepest Dive finale, like Haley and, and Kyle and everybody, they, they rocked it. Uh, Jenna, it was awesome to have her on there. Hmm. All right. Uh, would you consider Baldur's Gate 3 with uh, best friend Ronnie since Ray Luazo? That's an interesting idea. In a world with oh. infinite time, yes. In our world, oh, yeah, yeah. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, sorry to disappoint you. Um, it'd be cool to try. I, It's weird. We'll, we'll get to Baldur's Gate in a little bit. Right now, we're doing very important stuff in Day of the Diver. I know this game's good, and I feel like Jenna tried it. Jenna Steber, she talked about it on Party Chat. But I feel like people on the main crew, I don't think too many people played it for Dave the Diver, so maybe I'll play more of it. It does seem like a great Steam Deck game, but I saw kind of the systems in the loop and was like, okay, I think I get it. You go, you go swim around, you find discoveries, and then go back and do your restaurant. Not to diminish it, it seems really good. I just felt like, I, I kind of get it. Um, is it true that Kyle Bossman's bits were so bad on the podcast, Ben Max exiled him to Germany? I loved every one of Kyle's bits. Uh, loved having him guest host the podcast. That was a real thrill. All right, let's go. Let's actually Dave the Dive. This stream is more ketchup than game. What'd you want? It's called Hanson's Ketchup. It's not called Hanson's Bit. Even his Picross bit? <laughs> loved his Picross bit. <laughs> it was a thinker. It was a thinker. Uh, I, I was delighted by the number of people that were delighted by Bossman. Uh, doing bits. You know, even if they didn't land exactly how we wanted. Bossman doesn't disappoint. Yeah, it was very fun. Thanks everybody for listening to the Midmax Show podcast where all that came through. Dave is diving. We're doing it. Uh, I played on Steam Deck before, so my controls... Okay. I'm gonna have to relearn them here to some extent. I remember I was kind of confused by the... Um... Mm, how does this work again? by the controls of the... The controls of the, uh, like, restaurant portion. People really miss Bossman hosting a podcast. The EZA community appreciated it. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. I mean, I think Blood's doing a great job with the Easy Allies podcast, and I still, that's one of my favorite gaming podcasts out there, and so... Uh, definitely check that out. Uh, but yeah, it's nice to have all those people that like, oh, I miss Bossman hosting a podcast, and... The fact that he did it for a limited time made it more manageable, I think, for him. Less intimidating. Uh, will Boston ever return? We talk about all that on the new episode of Party Chat, the Patreon-exclusive podcast. So if you want more Bossman talk, unlock that bonus podcast. That's what we call a tease. That's what we call a ketchup tease in the biz. Maybe I should have the ketchup on my shoulder like a little parrot. Is this? It's been a while. Is this how you make content? Okay. Um, oh, I should probably worry more about oxygen. This MFR, this Mario 64 MFR. 
Um, in my uh, little hometown. Oh! In Minnesota. Uh, they have a brewery, and there was a band playing the brewery there a couple weeks ago when we were there. And uh, one of the songs the band played was the underwater music for Mario 64. And it was like me and like one other person in the crowd were like, woo! And everyone else is a bunch of old timers drinking beer. They're like, what the hell? What is this song? Because <laughs> the rest of them were just like covers of other songs, but I thought it was like the coolest choice. I mean, nothing's cooler than the underwater music. Uh, okay, so this is Dave the Diver, y'all. I think you get the idea, right? You also manage a restaurant, and it's good. Uh, Forest of Two R's. Have I played Pikmin? By God, Forest of Two R's. Um, I, uh, I rolled credits in Pikmin 4 as well. That was, it, like, my two big gaming accomplishments during the break were buying ketchup and eating the ketchup. Ah. Uh, was finishing... Final Fantasy 16, and then uh, I say finishing Pikmin 4, but I just, I got to credits. I put in like, I think 22 hours and rolled credits, and I understand that's only halfway through the game. Um, and a lot of people are like, oh, you gotta spend another 20 hours to get the true ending, all that stuff. And I will, if I have time. Um, to be fair, post game's really big. Is it that good? Because I, I don't mean to be mean, and we'll talk about it more the two tens and stuff. I enjoyed Pikmin 4. I enjoyed Pikmin 4 exactly as much as I enjoyed Pikmin 1, which is like, it's all a little game. I like walking around and throwing Pikmin on stuff. But like some of the hype for Pikmin 4 got me so, got me really excited. Got me expecting a lot more, I think. And I got it, I said, yeah, it's a good Pikmin. It's the best Pikmin. No offense, still Pikmin. It's, it's a fine time. Um, Maybe I can just blame Dan Reichert uh, for being like, it's the second coming of Christ, um, which I know if he's an expression choice now, but I, I, I had a good time with that game. I don't want to put it down at all, but I was just a little confused about the hype. But maybe that kind of post-game stuff is the way to go. All right. Uh, and that's Dave the Diver. Let's return to this boat. <laughs> How many times will I do that? What is, what is this button? Does anybody know what this button is? Did I watch Secret Invasion? Great question. Uh, Alt F4 was the, the answer, by the way. Um, I did watch Secret Invasion. I had not thought about it uh, for a long time. You know what time it is. Time to re-fill uh, that ketchup. Um, Secret Invasion was an interesting one. Um, <laughs> that still grosses me out. I don't think I could do it. Um, Secret Invasion, I didn't think it was great. Um, it was just kind of like, okay, I, I haven't, other than She-Hulk and WandaVision, I really haven't loved any Marvel TV. Um, but I really loved She-Hulk for all of its faults. Um, but Secret Invasion was like, eh, it's, it's whatever. No big deal. Uh, Excuse me? Skip? Uh, and so I was a little underwhelmed. And then it was like, I would go online and like check out the Marvel subreddit. And then, like, people were treating it like it attacked their family. Like, people hate Secret Invasion with such a passion that, I mean, it's often the case on the internet. You're like, I don't know. It was kind of disappointing. That's, I think, the correct response. But people were just furious about it in a way that I didn't quite understand. Uh... But, um, kind of hated the ending of She-Hulk, says snake -O. I, I think it's, it's fun. It's interesting. I, the ending of Secret Invasion definitely was, you know, they, they go for something and it's like, uh, is this character just going to be around in the MCU now? It seems insane. So, I guess at this point we should expect them to kind of break the conventions of the MCU, and we should get used to the idea of, like, oh, there's going to be really powerful characters. Whatever. But it was big. Yeah, Secret Invasion switched showrunners. 
The tone of the showrunner in some interviews, I think, was rubbing people the wrong way, too. Um, so nothing quite seemed to, to land in a big way. I'm trying, to think, <clears throat> trying to think of anything I liked in Secret Invasion. No, I guess I didn't like anything about it, but I just wasn't that angry about it. Maybe that's just my age at this point. They'll never address it again, probably. Oh yeah, Soka starts tonight. Hmm. All right. So, I started a Warlock in Baldur's Gate 3. This is the very beginning of Baldur's Gate 3. Um, ooh. I haven't played with the mouse and keyboard yet, so forgive me. Here's where we're at. It's the very beginning. <clears throat> Made the character. I went through one fight. I didn't really understand anything. I'm not a CRPG, I'm not really a D&D guy. This fight up here, I lost twice. Got two game overs. Then, Baby Gamer, I understand this. I'm more interested in catch up than I am gaming. Well, <laughs> um, so I lowered it to easy. And then I lost two more times, and I said, okay, I, clearly I don't understand what's going on. But, I was playing this game. I've only played it on the Steam Deck. So I feel like I'm missing something, some details. So, this might be a fight you're not supposed to fight. Well, tell me, once we go in that sphincter. It'd be nice to have a little ketchup coming out of the sphincter. I feel like that'd be more appropriate for the show. More appropriate to real life where ketchup comes from. These fries are really good, by the way. Even they are a little bit cold and, and soggy. Yeah, the brain. Did everybody get the brain? I Look, I'm super happy this game is doing well. Uh, and I was already impressed just with that little bit of dialogue of like the brain at the beginning. I'm like, God, that's this is a fun conundrum to have in the first like five minutes of the game. Do it. We will deal with the gate. I love that. It's a more interesting conundrum than you'd expect, you know? I've just seen the brain, but never with the party. So the brain wants me to get to the helm of the ship, right? So, here's the brain. Now, all you Baldur's Gate people, you gotta help me with this, because I really do not understand. Pay attention to what they tell you. You don't need to fight. I've tried that. I've tried just running up here, because this is what I have to mess with, right? where there's so much chaos. So people are saying, don't fight. Can I turn invisible? Here's what I haven't done. I haven't dashed. Maybe I should try that, huh? How does this work? Can I dash all the way here? No, of course, don't be stupid. Okay, let's dash here. Kill the little guys, ignore the big guy. All right, so there's a, there's a dash. What is the deal with this guy? I was so confused about this. Can I recruit him? I was like, why is he green? I tried saving him. He's on my team. I don't think I can do enough damage to this guy to save this guy. Is there to be cinematic? The brain can interact with, can't interact with the console. Okay. All right, so brain, uh, I guess you can, you're gonna stay there and, and have a good time. Uh, where's, and turn. Oh, there we go. I am fury. I am death. Okay, so we got her. A big <clears throat> He's bait. He's an ally that's bait. Ignore the commander guy entirely, people say. God, nothing better than a good, soggy, room temperature fry. Oh, there is something better. It's a soggy room temperature fry. Covered in ketchup, baby. Hmm. All right. He's controlling your mind and wants you to do the console thing. Sick of ketchup yet? No. Absolutely not. Any expectations from Gamescom? Really was a. It's called Hanson's Ketchup. It's not called Let's Talk About Upcoming Video Game Adventure. Come on, ma'am. Uh, but we'll be streaming a reaction. It'll be up on YouTube. By the time you're watching this on YouTube, everybody. Okay, so let's... So you're saying everybody should just dash all right, so not enough movement. Just get as far as you can, Chief. Mm. 
Enemy's melee range allows them to attack his reaction. Avoid this by taking the dis. So this is the part where it's like, oh boy, this is a this is an interesting game. So like, you can't you can't just leave if you're next to an enemy. You can't just walk away from them if you don't want to fight them. You have to disengage first. That's kind of how it works here. You can change the units to be Imperial rather than Metric. Mm. Well, I think I'm okay with this. Um, all right, let's, uh, not enough resources. Let's have you do a pommel strike on this. I mean, should I not do that? Okay, here we go. And then end the turn. You can walk away, but they'll get a free attack on you. Again, I realize soon, like, oh, I need to, I need to get coached in a big way to better understand this game. Uh, cause there's a lot of stuff. Space bar for a quick intern, thank you. Uh, my Warlock Queen, yeah, again, this UI is so different compared to playing on Steam Deck with the controller and stuff. So let's just have you end the turn there. So this guy's just gonna be bait, okay. Everyone's moving around a little bit. So I've tried to run past all these guys before. It did not go well. So do you have any larger ideas of what I can do better here? Seems like XCOM with less grids and guns. Yeah, you can say that. So should I take out Commander Zulk? Or I should run past him? It is still an easy difficulty. Absolutely. You cannot take him out. That's good to know. Should I take out the lesser imp? Let's try it. It's good brain juice. Good brain juice. Okay, so disengage. Right here. Seek. Use it. Now I dare ya. I dare ya to come after me. I can just run right up here. You can take out the guy with the sword, but it's hard. Really, that's interesting. Um, sorry, somebody asked, did I see Indiana Jones? Great question. This is what the show's all about. Yes, I did see, I watched Dial of Disney. Um, I watched it with my parents. My mom really loves Indiana Jones, and so it was a fun, fun, uh, nostalgic watch. Uh, I liked it. I liked Indiana Jones. Um, Again, I didn't really see too much of the discourse. It just seemed like no one saw it, but not in love with every aspect of it. There are a couple jokes. I was like, ah, oh, it doesn't really work. And I think the biggest problem with it is like the, um, the direction of the comedy. Like, I think a lot of the jokes and like physical jokes and stuff did not land. Other than that, like, if that's one of the thing, it's one of the thing, like the, I think the ending is awesome. Yeah. It's like, in terms of when I think back on like movies this year, and I think about like when I was most excited in the theater, well, that's one other thing. I'll say like when they're in the plane in Indiana Jones, you know, going through the clouds, like edge of my seat. Like that is the most fun premise for a movie. Uh, so I was so excited. And then like they lean into that so hard. And I think the way they like resolve that, I think is really smart. Um, so I, I had a good time with Indiana Jones. I think. The problem is I then saw Mission Impossible and that movie's just so much better as an action movie than Indiana Jones. So I think retrospect seems a little lame. Um, I, also, I, I don't understand. I think the beginning was fine. That's good. Like the train scene in the dark. But like, just keep Indiana Jones in the dark and then their de-aging looks great. But they kept putting him in the light. And it's like, you guys, you don't need to do this. You don't need to do this. The fries are great. The fries are great. Uh, Mission Impossible. I did see Mission Impossible. Um, okay, you stop the there. You, the only way out is through. You, way out is through we'll catch a break. She says. Um, love Mission Impossible. Love Mission Impossible. Um, basically having Ethan Hunt, the villain for this time around, and his biggest opponent be God. <laughs> Essentially, it's like, that is, it feels like a JRPG. Like, it, the stakes feel so high. It is such a cool angle. I thought it was really fun, really funny. The action was so creative. Like, that car chase scene. I normally don't care about car chases at all, but I thought it was awesome. <clears throat> so, really, really loved it. 
Um, so my ranking for Mission Impossible is four, six, one, seven, three, five, two. Does that make sense? Thank you, Rich. Thank you for the big subs, buddy. All right, Brain's having a good time. Can you do anything? Can you loot this? Not enough movement. All right, so you just sit tight. You can run up here. Let's just... Uh, was, you're a little close. Oh. You will not take me. Hello. I forgot to disengage because I went past his little hot spot. Is that what's going on? Hello, OG. Thanks for being here. Realize I've never seen a Mission Impossible, but if your enemy is God, it does sound like an impossible mission. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. She has a self-healing action. Ben's real name is Hans. That's right. This first Mission Impossible reminded me of the original in tone, the way it's shot. It's a lot of Dutch angle stuff. Yeah. But, you know, it's interesting. I'm going through the spoiler cast with Christopher McQuarrie, the director. Like, he does these amazing spoiler casts with Empire. And Empire now has a paywall, so you have to pay to get their spoiler cast. But I just listened to the third episode with the director unpacking the movie, and it's like, I think they're literally on hour number nine of just talking about the making of Mission Impossible, and it's so fun. It's just so wild how loose they are with uh, those huge movies and the actual structure of these things. Um, can we? Oh, we can go up here. Let's let's keep running. Oh, you can't keep running. You can't keep running. Yeah, McCory's so open. It's really fun. So very much enjoy that. I hit my chances. She has a self-healing action. The warlock does. Okay, reach the transponder before the nautiloid crashes. I did not. I did not do what I need to do. Should I focus on looting any of these freaks? Let's go look. Take all. I hope you like an onyx. I do, I do. Let's have you run up here, my queen. Is there... So you don't need healing. Oh, the, so the other lady has. Oh! Oh, my lady! Uh, let's see. Damn it. Should've healed her first. Should've healed her first. Um, all right. How do I get those rolls? Let's have you run up here. You have ranged attacks. You can be using when you end your turn now. Hmm. Yes, great point, great point. He doesn't. He doesn't, but she do. Um, all right, piercing strike, so I can use my, and you can only use these moves once? Is that correct? Sarah's taking psychic damage somehow. I, I understand that. I understand that. Are you gonna do any co-op? Not planning on it. Not planning on it. <sighs> Situational awareness. See, Sarah is a cooler, better gamer because she loves this game. And Haley really loves this game too. I, I respect anybody who this game really clicks with, but I don't know if it's gonna be me. But then again, you can see my level of understanding for this game, which is an absolute zero. Um, <clears throat> other than uh, respect from a distance. So. Let's have you in there. I wish the bear thing would have attacked her first. The mind flare first. Instead of hurting that person like that. That innocent soul. Okay. So, the brain, you say, can't do it. God, can I? I can't take out that hell's... Wait, no, it just says five? Maybe I can take it out. Let's do it. Just run up and hit that console since so it my chat. All right. Might click more if you co-op. People really like co-op. As mentioned on the podcast a few weeks ago, the two tens is going to be fun with Zelda and Baldur's Gate 3. I agree. I think I think maybe as a group, enthusiasm for Zelda is less than I thought. But in terms of Baldur's Gate love, I think it's just Sarah. Haley. If Haley joins our discussions, she's welcome to. Community manager Haley McLean. Um, I don't know if she will. So I don't know. I think Sarah will have to fight for it. But I don't know. I think right now as a group, we're more passionate about Zelda. 
I think. Look at this. The Baby game. How did I lose at that? It Four times. <laughs> Sarah hates Zelda. Look, she's playing it up. Didn't she stream a lot of it? That seems like a tough game to hate. Unless you're only hating it to, to bring up Baldur's Gate 3. I think it's a little bit of that. If I had to guess Sarah's mind state. Mind flare state. Sarah hates Final Fantasy 16. I know. I had no idea. We In the Monday meeting, she hinted at that a little bit. I was like, whoa. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. I think there's a lot of interesting discussions to have about 16. I can understand why somebody would hate 16. Right now it feels like 16 is like, on my personal top 10 list, probably like number eight. Somewhere around there is where I'd, I would guess that it is right now. We'll see what changes. Baldur's Gate 3 is so much more niche and has big tech problems. Yeah. I'm curious, like, especially on PS3, how it's going to run here. You know? You know what I mean? I have a headache, I think, from all that ketchup. You guys? That looks cool. I don't really... I'm not really into fantasy stuff in general, unless it's Redwall. Um, but that is a cool looking fantasy thing. That ship rules. My head may be a tomato, but lord. Ketchup headaches can only be cured with more ketchup? Is that right? Oh my god, I had no idea. Ah, my mouth tentacles feel great in the wind. All right, so this is kind of the start of the game. We're basically here, huh? I I disagree that 16 gets better as it goes on. Like, there's a sweet spot in the middle where I was the most into it, but I feel like it was, it was dragging a little bit by the end. I was ready to, to wrap that sucker up. The main theme is very good in this game, absolutely. Even just like the music for the character creator, mainly because it's what I've heard a lot of. Do you like my character, by the way? I think she's cool looking. Do you like her, Chad? Do you love her? Exposition staircase in 16. As you wake, the tadpole squirms in your skull. I don't remember exposition staircase, but remind me. People weren't drinking seltzer while I was away. Uh, I don't care about myself. Of the crash site it's so the cool to have a narrator, isn't it? You'll need to find a settlement or landmark, and you'll need to do it quickly. The tadpole is a death sentence. Thank you, Flosby. The clock is ticking. You need a cure. Sarah complains about her character in all of her streams. Perfect. Don't waste a second. Look out! They're getting away! God, speaking of Kyle Bossman, is he, so every delayed input video he does, uh, for this last couple seasons, I guess, I don't, if you've never watched it, they're very funny and very good, but he just inserts one car honk noise into every episode, and it makes me laugh every time. And I think the funniest one is he was talking about the success of Baldur's Gate 3, and he was talking about, he's like, well, I mean, I guess I have to go back and look at Baldur's Gate 2. And then he just cuts to gameplay of Baldur's Gate 2, and right when he cuts to gameplay, he's like, it's like the honk sound at gameplay of old ass Baldur's Gate 2 is one of the funniest things. So every time I have like tiny person on the screen, I just think of that car honk now, and it makes me laugh in a big way. Uh, I believe Ronnie's doing well. Um, hopefully, hopefully you'll see him not to... Hopefully you'll see him soon. Is that the best way to put it? Hey, where's my... Did the brain not make it? Did Brain Buddy just die? Could I have, like, picked him up and saved him on that ship? 
Well, there's no way to know because we're saving the game and we gotta jump to a new one. New save. Here we go. The brain doesn't make it. That sucks. I liked him. I thought he was cool, man. Made it past the fight. Made it past the fight. All right, battle bit. Here we go. Mm. I've got a, this is my first time playing this one at all. So I have to put it on my list of games that I've played this year, which is obnoxious, but it very much helps for remembering what the hell came out this year. Thank you, Procyon number six for the big sub. Battlebit was one of those that it felt like everyone talked about for 48 hours and then moved on. Welcome to the game industry, man. Hope the crew talks Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. Yeah, I did uh, I did start Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. I don't think we're gonna talk about it too much. Maybe if somebody writes in about it, um, but I'm not a big Jet Set guy. And so I played it and I was like, oh, this game seems cool for Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. But I don't think anybody else is really into it. Uh, but hey, we'll have the Patreon post up later today so you can write in if you want us to talk about the little little bit that I played at least. Seems like a Leo game. Yeah, maybe he would be into it. So. All right. Minimal advertising is allowed. No catch-up streams. What the hell? There wasn't much discussion on Remnant 2. Um, Leo sounded like he enjoyed the first one. Kyle Kyle could have talked about Remnant 2, uh, but I guess just the scheduling didn't work out. Uh, he, he wasn't too hot on it, but I know other people are still really digging it, which is great. Hmm. Um, I agree. Ban my account if I misconduct. All right. Uh, Battlefield. Let's see. I like Bad Company 2. And, um, I liked, uh, 1942. So I should know exactly what to do. Can I... <laughs> exactly sure what happened there. Uh, oh my god, cool. Alright. Hello. Hold three to revive. Orb wife? What has been happening in gaming since I've been gone? You guys have orb wives now? Oh, does it say what is an orb wife? Holy shit! Well, I tried to tried to do my job there. <laughs> Let's get in there. Okay. LOL, he doesn't know what an orb wife is. Is that right? <laughs> Leave me and my orb wife alone. <laughs> my God. Tell them about ketchup. But yeah, hopefully they can't hear me. Hi. Have you heard the good word about ketchup? I will heal myself. Thank you. Do I need to really hold it down for a long time? Nothing's worse than a stream where someone's struggling with the absolute basics of the gameplay. All right, here we go, team. Here we go, squad. We got this. Here we go. I get you. The voice chat people will tell me about their orb wives? Ugh. I just hate it when people go on and on about their orb wives and how great they are. Come on. Well, let's actually run towards the combat, first of all. I don't know what you're trying to accomplish running away from it. I don't know why they made this map a maze for rats. It seems like an odd move. I was listening to an interview with the developer of this game. And he was saying that they haven't quit their day jobs yet, even though this game was like a crazy success. They all still have full-time jobs, which is such a wild idea. Um, you know what? I will hold this. I will, I will stop push, myself push, from bleeding. Push, 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 push. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. All right, here we go. I like how aggressive they are about just like, hey, don't be a dick in the chat. I think that's nice. Thank you, Sean, for the big sub. Oh my god. Oh, ho, ho, of course, of course there's vehicles. I didn't even think of such a thing. Uh, is someone on top? It's Battlefield, everybody. All right, let's go to point C. Can I squeeze through here, you think? All right. Okay, let's get to... Hey, 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 hey. 
Easy. Easy. Okay, we lost objective D. That's fine. That's fine. Get out of the car. Get out of the car. Heal up. Yeah. Hold space to give up being revived. Your team will lose one ticket. I don't think anyone's coming out in the middle of nowhere to get me. Push, push, push. Maybe he's at the hospital helping his partner with their child. That could be. That very well could be. Uh, sure. Can I spawn on people? There we go. So, yeah, they said that with the original vision of this game, it's like, I just wanted to make a battlefield that could run on everything. And <laughs> people just wanted that. Like a battlefield with no BS and runs well. Turns out people were ready to buy that. I'm sure EA was punching their hat like Ross Perot when they saw how well this game was sold overall. Hey, whoa, come on, man. We're trying to have a good time here. Uh, okay. This time, you guys. We're gonna go nice and easy. Let's just start from B. I would at least like to... Be careful, boys. ...see somebody. Is that too much to ask? Also, spawn points. I'm still a little confused about what exactly... how those work. Can I scramble up that? I don't think so. Beep, 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 That was me. That was me. Want them to know it was me? Okay. Well, come on, man. Really rolling the dice, says Greyhound. Very good. You die way too fast in this? For my taste, there's no time to learn anything. Well... Okay, this is kind of a thrill to having super fragile people here. Best movie I saw on paternity leave. Oh, Bob. Great question. Great question. Ooh, it's been a long time. I mean... Is it Barbie? Might be Barbie. Really, really loved how weird that movie was. Um, especially like, I know, it's a weird thing to unpack, but it's like that ending is so wild and there's a lot you can talk about with every aspect of that movie but like I just think it's so cool and it just it, it surprised me how funny it was because as much as I love Greta Gerwig's other movies like I didn't think that they were like knockout comedies but Barbie just yeah, floored me it was so funny um loved Oppenheimer loved Oppenheimer enjoyed Barbie more um Oh, and the box. I haven't seen a lot of movies now that I think about it. I'm doing all right. I feel like there's some movie I probably watched at home that I really loved. I'm trying to think. Rewatch Crystal Skulls, so probably that. Probably that. Um, How to with John Wilson. Does that count as a film? Guardians 3. Yeah, we did We did mech spoilers for Guardians 3. Uh, so that one's already decently covered. Hey, let me in, let me in. There we go. Uh, yeah, Indy 5, I enjoyed. I enjoyed a lot. Um, yeah, there's no big Marvel thing, I think, that I missed. Did I follow the Microsoft Activision stuff? A little bit. Like, I still listen to, you know, five gaming podcasts a week, at least. Um, <laughs> how many rewatches of Avatar? Man, I did rewatch Avatar Way of Water. I still absolutely love it. Uh, Bob says, how do you feel about being right about aliens? Yeah, that was one of those stories that I was a little, I should have looked into more. Uh... Because it's like, okay, somebody testified in front of Congress. That's great. But, like, I don't... Oh, but the government still gave that person a thumbs up to say everything they said? So I'm a little... I don't know. A little skeptical about the idea of, like, yep, they confirmed it for the fourth time. It's like, well, I don't know. I don't know, you guys. Did you see that? Asteroid City, I have not seen. I have not seen that. Um, Kill him, John! I, I'm, I'm excited to see... Uh, Asteroid City at some point, but no, I haven't seen it yet. Um, all right. Hey, everybody. I think... I think you're not going to get a better look at those three games than what we just went through today. So thank you all for having me back. Thanks for being so nice to everybody while I was gone. Thanks for supporting the content. All that fun stuff. Uh, cannot thank you all enough.
Again, if you want to hear more about the paternity leave, all that fun stuff, you can unlock the bonus podcast party chat by supporting us on Patreon. And that's also where you can vote for more episodes of Hanson's Ketchup or somebody else's Ketchup, whatever we do for episode two or whatever we pitch next for new show. Plus, patreon.com slash minmax with two N's. Thank you so much, everybody. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. Every week, we let Patreon supporters choose which new show we create with New Show Plus. Should we create another episode of the show you just watched? Check out the biggest new game release? Get into Sea of Thieves? Create an exercise show? It is your call. So thanks to everybody who subscribes on YouTube or supports us over on Patreon. MinMax exists because of you. As always, if you enjoy MinMax content, any help telling a friend is appreciated.